What is going on, my baboon brothers, my simian sisters? Deej is here with a continuation of the Choosing a CEO in a Competitive Advanced War series. I know in prior videos in this series, there are quick overviews of the Advanced War CEOs and when to use them. Therefore, I wanted to do a more in-depth look at some of the Advanced War CEOs played most differently from the rest. Notably, Sammy, Grit, and Sturm. Therefore, today we're going to be taking an in-depth look at how to play Sammy, the infantry specialist, well, and in what situations to choose her. Now, there are a few themes you need to know about Sammy before we go more in depth. Number one, Sammy is a higher skill level CO despite first appearances, and playing her requires more brain power than playing, say, Olaf or Max in standard play, or Jake or Adder in Fog. Number two, she is a CO full of contradictions which is why inexperienced players often fare poorly with her. And number three, she's usually either dominant or awful depending on the map, which not much in between. You really need to know what sort of map she's good at and bad at before you select her. So Sammy is a higher level CO to play, but how exactly do we play her? Well, first off, Sammy's stats and CO powers dictate that she relies on infantry, mech combat, and typically an income lead to win a battle. However, she is not only about building infantry and mechs and avoiding building her weaker tanks. Think of Sammy more so as supplementing your army with mechs and transports rather than viewing her as a completely new CO where you just spam out mechs, spam out T-copters, etc. So playing Sammy well, particularly in the early game, requires knowledge of transport openings and timings. I would recommend checking out games by Go7 and Contbay, as well as my transport video for some ideas regarding that. Another critical part about playing Sammy well is knowing how to properly use and position mechs. The key to mechs is that they hit just as hard, if not harder than tanks, but their weakness is that they have terrible defense and only two movement. The main saving grace of the mech is the cost. Each mech built instead of a tank saves you 4,000 in funds that you can use to tech up your tanks to medium tanks or neo tanks or build copters that your opponent can't afford if they build tanks while you build the mechs. Now, positioning mechs can be tricky for beginners, so my trick to simplify this is to pretend mechs are artillery. Now, some of y'all be thinking, pretend mechs are artillery? What, have you lost your mind? Well, the thing is, would you put an artillery in the middle of planes where it could be first struck by tanks an opponent's infantry? No, you wouldn't do that. You put your artillery behind infantry walls where they cannot be first struck, and you at least put them on high defense tiles like cities or forests. Same goes with mechs. You don't want them to be first struck by your opponent's vehicles. Even worse, you don't want them to be first struck by your opponent's infantry. So you should put them behind infantry walls so they can't break through and get first strikes on it. Because if you allow your opponent to get first strikes from with their infantry onto your mechs on weak terrain like planes or roads, your advantage will erode. You need to have your mechs well defended or they slowly push forward. So utilize your infantry walls as Sammy as well, not just for artillery, but also for mechs. I also highly recommend investing in at least one T-copter, which is only 5K. Like I said, you save 4K off the bat building a mech instead of a tank. So it's only 5K. I highly recommend investing in at least one T-copter because this will facilitate movement of the mechs and boost their movement from two to as high as 10 properly utilizing transport movement and boosting at the end. Experienced players will also understand that Sammy is a methodical push CO, usually not a one-turt knockout CO unless the HQ is vulnerable. She relies on higher income to grind an opponent down with her weaker vehicles. And generally, you want to slowly overcome your opponent with mech, artillery, and teched up units using the funds you saved from building mechs instead of tanks. Then when you get your super CO power ready, take as many cities as you can and rinse and repeat. However, do not go crazy, balls to the wall, overextending, and lose all your units to get temporary income. I've lost a few games where I've got 15, 16K income advantage, but I might have nine units compared to 30. You do not want to lose this way. You want to still maintain unit count advantage, but also get some income advantage as well. Do not go overboard trying to capture properties that you will not be able to realistically hold in the near term. Another fascinating thing about Sammy is her contradictions. While she has this potentially game-winning super CO power, 
Most maps, she is a slow burn CO. Another contradiction is, while Sammy has strong infantry and must secure an income advantage to win the game, she can't just rush from the get-go to get that income advantage early on most maps because she has to rely on a transport of her mechs to get into position first. So typically she gets bullied by the tanks and the recons early on, so she has to slowly gain that income advantage. She can't just go right out of the gate. And the last contradiction is, while normally she is a slow push CO, she becomes much, much more aggressive on mixed space maps and loses that whole slow burn style due to more isolated infantry fights and higher infantry unit count. Now regarding when to play Sammy, which maps to choose her on, as we mentioned earlier, she usually is either dominant or underwhelming on most maps. There's not much in between. So to be good at Sammy, you need to know what sort of maps she thrives on. Now these sorts of maps include high base count maps, mixed base, maps with bases cut off by mountains, rivers, or pipe seams, vulnerable HQ maps, pre-deployed transport maps, heavy terrain maps, and low income maps. Now we'll go into detail with all these maps, don't worry. So why does she thrive on these maps? Well, regarding high base count maps, that typically translates to more infantry and not necessarily more vehicles when you have three, four, five bases, because you can't typically afford to pump out four plus vehicles or air units every single turn on non-high income maps, which means you're gonna have more infantry, more infantry battles from both sides, and more mech viability. Now, Sammy is good on mixed base maps for a couple of reasons as well. Typically, mixed base maps have three plus bases, which is better for Sammy, can pump out more infantry. But more importantly, mixed base maps make it harder to coalesce an army into one spot, allowing a ton of early infantry fighting that is isolated from vehicle coverage. So her stronger infantry can bully enemy infantry without dying to vehicles. Also, income is typically more valuable in mixed base, so her income boost helps greatly. Maps with cutoff bases are pretty self-explanatory. They encourage mech usage and transport ferrying of mechs infantry from the isolated base, so naturally Sammy is going to thrive. Likewise, with vulnerable HQ maps, pretty straightforward. You try to get your super CO power and win by HQ cap, sacking any infantry you need. Redeployed transport maps are also typically good for Sammy because she can abuse the plus one range that all her transports have. That means her landers, her APCs, her T-copters, and her black boats all have plus one movement allowing her to have a reinforcement edge, particularly on water maps where landers and black boats are present, allowing her to get to the front lines quicker and already having a pre-deployed unit to help move her mechs is very helpful. Sammy also enjoys heavy terrain maps. Now, why is this? Sammy loves heavy terrain because forests and mountains and rivers slow down tank reinforcement times, allowing for more early isolated infantry battles that we mentioned earlier in the mixed base, which she wins outright. The heavy terrain also favors ferrying mechs with T-copters that can just fly right over the mountains and fly right over the rivers while the tanks are slogging through all the forests and whatnot. So the mechs will reach the front lines faster than even vehicles. Mountains are also great for Sammy mechs to perch on and bypass as well. So heavy terrain favors Sammy in general. Now, naturally Sammy loves low income maps since Sammy mechs are so damn cost effective and save her 4K rather than spending on tanks. Her medium tanks and neotanks are also very underwhelming compared to say Eagle, Olaf, or Maxes, so she prefers keeping her opponent on lower tech units, which her mechs can still trade cost effectively with. Now, bad maps for Sammy are basically the opposite of what we just talked about. Think maps with a lot of roads, easy for vehicles to move around, maps with low bases, which basically equals low infantry numbers, and high income maps where her income advantage is less important, there's gonna be a lot of teched up units. Now, if you're like me and a baboon-brained visual learner, that information I just provided might be a bit helpful, but you're not gonna quite get it until you see this sort of stuff in action. So next up, we're gonna do a few case studies, look at some recorded games, and apply what we just learned to identify Sammy's strengths and how to use them appropriately. All right, so for our first case study, we're gonna take a look at Sammy and Fog, which is tier four, up against the likes of Cole. Now this game right here was actually taken from a tournament, the Smacky Cup 2 Round 1. Now before we get started, I want you guys to take a look at this map, Khan, and try to identify why Sammy is a strong candidate on this map. Just for background reference, Sammy was the most picked CO in this round by all players. Uh, so just try to pause the video for a second and try to identify why Sammy might be strong on this map. Now, I believe Sammy's strong on this map for a few reasons. Number one, there's poor terrain for these two bases over here. You have to go through this forest 
It's going to take a tank three turns to get to the middle, and, it, and the mech actually can go in one, two, three turns as well to the middle. So that just highlights how useful this base here, right here, this base right here are for mechs. You can also use T-Copter ferrying and actually bring in one turn a mech to the center right in the middle of the action. So I really love Sammy for that reason. This is a prime candidate for a mech build right here. You build a whole bunch of mechs, mech chain, build six mechs or so. You have the saved fund from six mechs over tanks. That's $24,000. You can buy a Neo tank with those funds. You can buy a bomber with those funds. So it's very nice. This is a great candidate for a mech build right over here. You can go north, you can, you can go to the side, you can go south. Uh, for that reason, I love Sammy on this map as well as the T-Copter as well. Another reason why there's four comm towers rather than the typical two, so Sammy's vehicular shortcomings won't be as obvious when you have 110% firepower rather than the typical 100% with one comm tower. That being said, with her capture bonuses in her victory march, she might even be able to capture three comm towers. I actually had that happen during my game, so I had 110% firepower, firepower on my vehicles, enabling two guaranteed two hit KOs, tanks on tanks on cities, so one tank attacks, brings down the six, the next one attacks, kills the tank guaranteed, which really allows for some nice two hit KOs. Uh, so for that reason, I like the comm towers. Uh, and Sammy typically, not typically, but it's not uncommon that Sammy might also get control of uh, three Calm Towers. Another reason why, actually, third reason, the, the HQs are actually quite vulnerable over there. There is a Black Boat on top, but it is vulnerable to an attack from a bomber. It's actually two turns away from this airport. A bomber, or neo tank, artillery can kill that. And the Victory March will knock you out quite quickly. This, uh, this is not quite easy to defend for purple over here. Likewise, free yellow over here, so... I'd say it is mildly weak HQ, not extreme uh, example right here, but for those reasons, I believe Sammy is strong on this map. So let's look at the game itself just really quickly. We're just gonna go through turns quickly. Just wanna highlight yellow, kill me first, strong player. He won this game, I see I'm not, I'm, spoiler alert, he starts off with a mech chain over here, doesn't have a T-copter, he actually, I would've gone for the airport a little earlier than he did. He, he took a little delayed airport, so he's just building mechs. He's starting a chain over here. Notice how he has infantry walls, like I mentioned earlier. He's pretending this mech is artillery. He's not putting on the front lines where he can get hit by a recon. He's not putting on the front lines where he can get hit by a tank. He's hiding them. It's in a forest, actually, so it also has defensive terrain. Keeping them behind. Look at these mechs. Perfectly positioned. If they're all on the front line being able to be seen, they're on cities. They're not on planes. None of them are on planes, except for this one back here that's not visible. Slowly but methodically using that mech chain over there. Builds his first T-Copter a bit late. That's fine, though. Uh, he's got a ton of mechs. He's being very methodical. The only place he's really attacking is down here to get his comm tower. Not going too crazy over here. Slowly but surely, he's, he's, he's following the pacing of the mechs. He's not overextending himself with a mech sit behind. He's waiting for the mechs to get in position. So, look, he doesn't attack right here. His mechs aren't in position early. He saves enough money for the Neo tank from all the funds he had for the mechs. Notice Purple has no attacked up units except for this rocket and the medium tank, but that pales in comparison to a, me uh, a Neo tank over there. So very defensive build. Slowly but surely inches forward. As I said, Sammy is a slow burn CO, so you want to slowly push forward. Look how he just slowly, like, boom, boom, a little bit closer. Maybe a little overextended on this Neo tank. He didn't play this game perfectly. I think the Neo tank was a little overextended, but it is defended by these mechs over here. He gets a lot of charge. Let's, let's go slowly over here work out the turn. I think he's going to get victory march right here. He gets his victory march, and like I said, you can get the comm tower quite easily. That's the first thing you should do. Captures the comm tower. Now you have immediately have a huge firepower bonus. Captures. Now he has four comm towers. This game is essentially over at this point. You're not going to get those back very easily. And just like that, mechs wreck havoc. The guy keeps going, though. This game is essentially over, but he, the guy plays on. Attacks in. See, Kill Me First has his huge advantage. He's got 33,000 to 19,000, but he doesn't keep pushing forward. Even though he's incredibly strong, Sammy is a slow burn. You're not going for the knockout. You get all those properties, but you fall back a bit. You let those funds come in. You buy your bombers. You buy your near tanks. You're not going crazy and just trying to wipe out and base rush over here. You enjoy your income advantage. You let it pile up. What's the rush? You're Sammy. You're chilling. You're chilling like a villain. Look at him. The near tanks over here, just chilling a bit, sitting on that huge advantage. He even allows the comm tower to come back. It's not even a big deal. And just goes for the death push right here. Didn't even need to, but he's winning by so much right here. Going for the death push over here and just essentially wins on this turn. And IDP resigns. So in that instance, I think Kill Me First played a semi very well. Had defensive mechs. He paced his army in timing with the mechs. Mechs are defensive units. So you want to have them on defensive terrain behind your infantry units. They're just like artillery. You want to defend them, not let them be vulnerable. And you want to keep pace with your mech army as well. A T-Copter helps you up the pace of your mechs and attack quicker instead of waiting for each turn to move two. So it's very helpful to have those transport units to assist. So that was the first case study. Next up, we're gonna look at Sammy and Standard. So this is our next example. Sammy is in Standard play this time and in tier two along the likes of Max, 
Olaf, and Eagle. So take a look at this map right here. Spring in general is the name of the map. Just take a quick look and try to identify why Sammy might be strong on this map. Pause the video if you need to. Sammy is strong on this map for a couple reasons. One being there's going to be four bases. Sammy loves the more bases, the merrier. You're typically not going to have enough cities to keep up with pumping at four vehicles on every single city. You're, I think the equal, once you have equal income, it's going to be 26,000. So you're not going to be able to pump out four tanks every single turn. You're going to have, that's cost 28,000. So typically you're going to have a shit ton of infantry. Um, and for that reason, mixed base Sammy also thrives as well. You can get some nice rushes. This is somewhat vulnerable uh, HQ over here or lab rather. So they're somewhat vulnerable. You have to watch out for that as well. And uh, yeah, Sammy's just pretty strong mixed base. There's going to be a lot of isolated infantry attacks as we'll soon see. So just going through these turns right here. Look, you have to back off over here. These infantry are, are threats. Maybe if Sammy was here on the other side, Green might be able to take that. But so far, nothing out of the ordinary. Let's see. Let's go by turn by turn basis. Look, there's no vehicles to defend over here. This vehicle's way about, way over here. And then this infantry gets a nice first strike over here. It's going to be backed up by a tank. So this mech can actually go over here. So let's see. So now he's starting a tank chain. Plague is over here, which is useful. There is no T-Copter transport. So that would have assisted a bit more for Sammy on this map. Sammy's not an easy pick on this map, but she's actually quite strong overall. So Plague has this like little mech storm coming up over there. He does not have the comm tower, unfortunately for him. And another thing, a good counter against mechs is artillery because mechs kind of falter against artillery. Both of them are defensive units and it encourages standoffs. And it's a little bit hard. Sammy doesn't like standoffs unless she's ahead in the game because a standoff is going to benefit Eagle. It's going to benefit Olaf because that global damage from Olaf, that lightning star for Eagles only gets stronger and stronger. So Sammy does not like a standoff in that instance. But one thing you also have to be aware of from Sammy is not just the super CO power. It's also the CO power. Sammy is one of the instances like Adder where you can have a lot of charge and you can actually use two CO powers in a row rather than the super power. Sammy can be up to here, uses one CO power, the next turn she's already ready to use another CO power. She can be like Adder where you have full uh, charge and then immediately drop two CO powers in a row. So you have to be aware of that. So I believe in this instance, play highlights how you can use an effective CO power as Sammy. So if Sammy comes in, gets the charge, uses double time. Boom, breaks through that right there. And just like that, completely annihilates that artillery. It's a small little fight over there, but it essentially guarantees this is going to be doomed in the long term. It's a small fight early on, and you get these fights over here. Isolated infantry ex examples over here. There's no vehicles to cover, so you can't fight back. You just take the hit, like, bam. You can't fight back. You're just going to have to deal with it. You can't fight back over here. There's no vehicles to cover. It's mixed base, so you don't have enough vehicles to punish with that. So these are just gonna, infantry gonna have to go home, cry them through themselves on the couch and eat some ice cream because they're not gonna be able to fight back. See that? They can fight back a little bit, but look at this poor trade right there. Look at these poor trades. Look at that, six to five. Just pathetic. And then it nearly kills itself over there. Just not a good trade. And this game goes on for a while, but that was the main point is watching out for CO powers. I believe Plague plops, plops a few CO powers on this map. Yeah, he uses the power here. Look right here. Had full charge. Could have used a victory march. Opt to use the power. And you can use another power if you so chooses. And then a victory march to end the, the, the game. Pretty much getting a huge income advantage using his max. But anyway, we're not going to go into detail on the, whole map, on the whole map. But it ended up that Plague would win with Sammy. And for our final case study, we're going to take a look at Sammy and Fog again, which is tier 4 up against the likes of Adder. Now, this is on the map Hypong, and I want you guys to take a quick look at this map, try to identify why Sammy might be strong on this map, pause the video if you need to. Now, that was a trick question. Sammy's actually not very good on this map for a couple reasons. Number one being, there's only two bases. It's a base light map. Sammy likes minimum three bases because less bases, less infantry. So that's kind of a, a bad move for her over here. T-Copter build is a bit difficult in this as well. It can be useful, but it's going to come on later in the game since it is cozy away in the corner. The HQs are not very vulnerable as well, so for that reason, Sammy is not great. A few things working in Sammy's favor, however, though, is that it is a low-income map. I believe both sides have 18k-ish uh, when all things are being equal. So for that reason, Sammy is a little bit stronger, but on this map, it typically go Jess or Jake or Adder, for, to be perfectly honest. But you don't have to be the best CO to win a game. You can still play Sammy solidly and win. So let's see how Apostrophe plays this. Going through this, no early mech seat. Like I said, you don't have to dedicate yourself to building mechs first as Sammy. You don't have to build artillery first as Sammy. Pretend you're a normal CO 
and later on add some mechs. You don't have to force them in. Gets the T-Copter, then builds the mechs. I like that. You don't need to get mechs before the T-Copter, because in one turn, it's going to bring this mech to the front line. Just like that, over here, you can't really attack into this. You have the mech behind here. Look, it's on bad terrain, but you're covered. I would have preferred to have an, a unit right here blocking, so that mech cannot be struck so easily. Uh, I do like how this mech is covering the artillery as well. And this mech over here hiding in the forest. It's not on very great terrain. terrain. I mean, it's two, two defense stars, but it is hidden as, at least, so that's good for him. So let's look how this turn unfolds. I believe Dave attacks into this big old Dave over here. See, like I said, if there was an infantry here, that mech would be alive 100% and boom, that little tank over there. Boom, that artillery hits that tank over there and the game might even be over. But unfortunately, it does not work out that way. But for luckily for him, there is another mech over here. I don't know about that move over there. The mech positioning, bring this mech over here, plop it right there, or even better on the city. Okay, over there. It's not bad. Not bad positioning, but it's behind. It's not going to be able to be attacked very easily. And if I'm green, I should back off, but he doesn't back off. He gets punished. Now he learns to back off. And we'll go through this very quickly. Overextends over here. Bad idea over here. Sammy, sometimes you get a little squirmy, like, oh, I need the income. I'm Sammy. I need to be ahead. I'm only at 1k. I need to be ahead 10k. Yeah, you don't always have to be doing that. Wait till your victory march. What are you waiting for? Or rushing for? Just take your time. You're going to get this stuff later with victory march anyway. Look look right here. You're only ahead 1k. But then, you're going to get your victory march. Look, you didn't even need to worry about that. Got that. Got that. Got that. Don't even need to worry. Why are you rushing for infantry and in, income over there when you can just wait till later on? Smart move over here. Not getting too greedy. And look at this income right here. That's insane. Just hold back over here. Don't go crazy. Fall back, enjoy your income lead, and then you win. I think Big Dave actually just gave up after this because the income is crazy. Even though he could have fought on, it's actually not over. He could have kept fighting on because it's not that different in terms of unit count and unit value. However, it's just going to add up. 10k a turn, 9k a turn is going to add up quite quickly, or 8k in this instance. So I think Apostrophe played that well uh, for the most part in terms of mech positioning. And it's a bit trickier to play Sammy on two base maps, so well played for him on that instance. So I hope these case studies helped you learn a bit how to play uh sammy in real time like i want to i want to hammer home she's a slow burn co until she gets her superpower then you get everything and then you slow burn again it's like you go out you get your properties then you chill again you don't keep pushing slow burn except for the superpower slow burn and then you have the mixed base where she just goes nuts all the time she's not a slow burn because there's a lot of isolated infantry attacks so just make sure to focus on uh mixed base sammy is typically very strong and you want to go crazy and another thing, don't go crazy, too crazy with the mechs. Mechs are great, mechs trains, or mech, mech, mech trains, I guess, but mech chains uh, are good in some situations, but don't go overboard. You can still build tanks, you can still build recons. You're not forbidden to build bad, like, weaker vehicles, uh, so don't worry too much about that. Mechs are meant to supplement your army, they're defensive. You want to put them on defensive terrain, you don't want to have them revealed, like over here. If you didn't allow that first strike on the shoal over there, the game might have been even earlier over. Uh, before you even got to the superpower, because that would have just been a completely wiped out uh, army by perp or by uh, teal over here. So just keep that in mind. Anyway, I hope you guys learned a lot about Sammy. I hope you guys are ready to go in the Global League, wreck some shit. And uh, this is D just signing off, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.